everybody and welcome back to another episode of the points of articulation my name's dave and if you're new to the channel welcome today i'm gonna start looking at the star wars the power of the force collection beginning with r2d2 with light pipe eyes and retractable third leg so r2d2 was first seen in star wars episode 4 a new hope now i grew up with kenner toys predator aliens avp robocop swamp thin and of course star wars as a kid I had countless adventures with my toys, which are now sadly missing in action for the most part. But thanks to a local toy shop, I have been picking these up and rebuilding what I once had little by little. Now I'm really excited to finally delve into this set because besides Galoob's Micro Machine Star Wars line, the Power of the Force toys is what really got me into action figures per se. So I'm really happy to finally dive into these. So anywho, getting back to this figure, for its height, it's in the 3 and 3 quarter scale set up by the Kenner of old. So to go with action figures, this particular figure stands at 2.5 inches, which is pretty nice. So we do have a little bit to look at. We're going to take a look at the box, the mold, the articulation, paint, compared to some other modern action figures, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. Okay, real quick, I wanted to take a nice look at the package. We have our Star Wars logo, the Power of the Force, our figure. Then we have a nice photo of our figure with a brief description of what the figure does. For example, this one has light pipe eyes and a retractable third leg. Very iconic head of Darth Vader. And on the back, my favorite part of any action figure box, we have other figures you can buy, vehicles, a brief bio of R2-D2, which I will cut out, and a nice photo of R2-D2. Now this particular uh, box has the orange red lightsaber. And later on, they did add different colors. We have green here. And then let me grab a Shadows of the Empire figure. One of my favorite toy lines ever. And we can see it's like a purple. And uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. So that's everything I have to say about the box. So now let's get this package open and look at R2-D2. All right, kicking this review off, looking at the mold of this beautiful R2-D2 from the Power of the Forest line. I have to say, this is the figure I grew up with. This is the figure I used to play with. So I'm really glad to have a new one in hand. Uh, it really brings back the memories, to be honest with you. And uh, it's very detailed for the time period. A beautiful looking figure, it really is. So, just like my ship reviews, I'll go over the main sections of the figure. Look at the molding, the articulation, get a couple close-ups here and there. Look at that light pipe eye. And then we'll move on to the paint and so on and so forth. So, for the main sections... We have the dome, which has the radar eye, holographic projector, sensors in the back, and it's covered by a bunch of accessory panels. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I will not go over what every single panel is in this review because we will be here until 2020. Because basically, this is the Swiss Army knife of droids. Anything you could want, this bad boy has it from rocket boosters to computer inputs, everything. So having said that, Moving on down to the bottom, this little section here is the data input. That's where Princess Leia put the plans of the Death Star, so that's pretty cool. We have a speaker down there. Computer input over here. Pretty nice. This door right here, I know that opens up, and that is the shock arm. Got Salacious Crumb with that bad boy in Return of the Jedi. Moving on down, on our base, we have some great detail, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. On the back, nice recessed panels. Awesome stuff. For the arms, amazing amounts of detail. I like that a lot. And then we have our power cores, motorized treads. And we have a third motorized tread down here. By pulling this out, you can see it's fully molded and actually nice looking. And bringing that up, the other points of articulation are the arms that can rotate all the way around on both sides. And the dome can actually spin. No clicks or anything, so that's awesome. Now for the bottom of the figure, we do have some peg ports, which is nice. And the third leg just goes right back in, which is awesome. So that covers most of the main sections of the figure. So now let's get a close up to see all these details very briefly. And then we'll look at that light pipe and eye action. All right, getting as close as I can. 
We'll begin with the dome. You can see all the little panels here are recessed, which is amazing. Here we have our holographic projector, our radar eye, which looks pretty cool. Nice. And turning it around. A little chrome coming off there, but what are you going to do? Here we have our sensor area. Pretty cool. And very quickly, the top. Looking awesome. I love that. It's like a TIE Fighter window. Neat. For the main body, you can see all those panels. Pretty sick. When you lift the leg, you can see it's a seam. On the back, nice recesses on the bottom. Coming up. Beneath, nothing. Now for the leg or arm. Beautiful detail on here. It really is. And nothing's flat. It's all popping out. And then we have our foot or motorized tread. Wires, paracel. Very cool. I think that came out great. And again, there is a peg port on the bottom. Pretty cool. So let's get this out. Oh, I forgot to mention, we do have copyright stuff here. 1995 Kenner, China. And then our third leg, nicely detailed. And in the interior, as you can see, it is hollow. Bloop. And I did not forget about that amazing light pipe in action. Activate. Whoa. That is nice. A lot of lines use that, especially uh, Terminator, Transformers. It's a cool little gimmick. I like it a lot. And that's everything I have to say about the mold, articulation, and gimmicks. I believe this is a great addition to the set. A beautiful figure with some hidden gems in there. Just magnificent. So now let's take a look at the paint. And now looking at the paint of the Power of the Force R2-D2, all I can say is it is beautiful. Now we get about five different colors here. First one up, we're going to go with the chrome right off the bat for the head. The dome, if you would. Beautifully done. Now, because of time, it is starting to uh, flake off, so I'm going to be very gentle with it. But a beautiful job, very metallic. You can even see me in there. Hello. <laughs> now, on that, we do have blue, which is very nice, very clean. Love that top. Now, that blue continues to the back of the droid, on the arms, and in the front paneling, and the other arm. Very cool. Now, other colors, silver. And I love silver on toys. I think it looks amazing. Also on the arm and the joint here. On the back, on these two sections here with the recesses. Again, on the arm. Almost done. We have brown for the hoses on the motorized treads. On the front and the back. And finally, the main color, if you will, a molded white plastic for the main body and the arms or the legs and that came out great now because of time it is starting to turn a little yellow here and there but it's it's great regardless a lot of this is nostalgia for me I used to play with this all the time and let's just check out that leg as you can see it is also molded white plastic awesome so that's everything I have to say about the mold and the paint. So now let's compare this to some other action figures and then we'll be done. All right, now for a crazy size comparison with the Power of the Force R2-D2. We have some Black Series figures, the R2-D2 and Forlorn. Great figures there. On the far left-hand side, we have the NECA Child's Play Chucky figure. Creepy as hell. Uh, when I was a kid, besides Hellraiser, this is what scared me a lot. I know it's laughable now, but creepy. Now to the right. We have Marvel Legends Spider-Ham, and to the far right, Marvel Legends Juggernaut Wave Deadpool. Great figures all around, except Spider-Ham. His legs are basically a statue, but what are you going to do? And before I end the video, I just want to say to my friend Tyler, thank you so much. He got me this figure a couple weeks ago, and I've been looking for this Chucky doll for a very long time. And uh, he came down from Pennsylvania with my friend Doug, and he surprised me with it, so... Again, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me, even though this thing is creepy. 
And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars The Power of the Force R2-D2. Again, R2-D2 made his first on-screen appearance in Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, and for his height, he is standing at exactly 2.5 inches tall, which is awesome. He's to scale with the other 3 and 3 quarter inch figures of the line, which is great. Now, it's no secret, I said it multiple times, I'm a huge fan of The Power of the Force. I love the line. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I grew up with it. It was my introduction into the characters of Star Wars, and I fell in love with the line. There's a lot of nostalgia for me, and many of you loved my uh, ship reviews. So for me to do little figures, one, it's building my confidence so I can do my larger figures and not feel weird about doing them. But two, this is a way for me to look at the figures that made me who I am today and share it with all of you. And I hope you all enjoyed this review quite a bit. But do I think the Power of the Force R2-D2 is worth it? Absolutely. First of all, the mold is very impressive for 1995. Excellent little intricate things such as the little speakers and vents. The sides, even the dome has some recesses. Awesome stuff. Now the paint, beautiful application. Is it 100% perfect? No, you know, it's not going to be. But for what it is, for a little kid, this is amazing. And to add on to that, it has articulation. Four different points. The head, the two arms, and the retractable middle tread is awesome. And it has a lot of play factor. So if you're looking to buy this particular figure, I would suggest going on eBay, Amazon, hobby shops, little toy shops. These things are old, the prices vary, and you can usually get them for cheap. Now I recommend this for anybody who grew up in the 90s and loved the Power of the Force line, fans of R2-D2, or Astromechs in general. It is a great addition to any collection. So that's everything I have to say about this beautiful figure today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you want to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody. See 3PO next time.